Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. It's Sunday, August the 25th, 2019. Let's talk boxing. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, Sergei Kovalev delivered. Right? The stoppage comes off a jab. Quite frankly, that jab was a problem for Anthony Yard from the start of the fight. Understand, you have Kovalev, nickname Crusher. Right? Dictating distance, even when he's on his back foot. Right? Understand, Kovalev's a vet. He concedes the pocket to Anthony Yard, right? Young fighters think they need to be on their front foot to be tough. Older fighters aren't interested in being tough. They're just trying to be effective, right? So here you have Kovalev, who moves better than Anthony Yard, right? This is a movement fight. He makes a decision early in this fight. I'm going to concede the pocket to Anthony Yard. So he's moving around the ring and he's flashing one of boxing's best jabs. Right? And it's controlling distance to such an extent that Anthony Yard can't even land his. Let's look at the CompuBox numbers from some rounds. Understand, because of Kovalev's jab, Anthony Yard spends a significant portion of this fight too far away from Kovalev to do anything. So, in the fifth round, Anthony Yard throws 22 jabs. He lands none of them. Right? In that round, Kovalev throws 37 jabs. He lands 10 of them. Let's go to the next round, the sixth round. Anthony Yard throws 16 jabs. He lands one of them. Kovalev throws 34 jabs. He lands 10 of them. We get to the seventh round. You get the pattern. Anthony Yard throws 11 jabs. Lands none of them. Kovalev throws 35 jabs. Lands eight of them. Even the infamous eighth round, and we'll discuss the eighth round because quite frankly, Anthony Yard left this fight on the table. In the eighth round, when Kovalev is done, he's dazed. He's struggling. Anthony Yard throws 12 jabs. He lands two of them. Kovalev throws 32 jabs. Lands nine of them. In other words, Kovalev is landing at least eight jabs a round, right? Anthony Yard, a big round for him during this four-round stretch of the fight was him landing two jabs. Now, all I can say is, when you think about distance, how could Anthony Yard be too far away to land a jab? But yet Kovalev, in the same ring with him, is landing his jab. And that's because Kovalev is moving. Right? So understand, the distance isn't too far for Kovalev to land his jab. Because Kovalev moves to a spot, and by the time Anthony Yard makes the adjustment, Kovalev's hitting him with jabs. Right? By contrast, Anthony Yard hasn't mastered the movement part of the game. Right? He can't get close enough to Kovalev. He's robotic. He's a puncher who needs to have both of his feet planted on the canvas. Just look at the feet, guys. Kovalev's on the balls of his feet. So Kovalev's moving. So Kovalev is shortening the distance, getting jabs off, then moving away. You knew who the fighter was here with the experience in championship fights relatively early. Right? Anthony Yard looked like he could barely move. 
the fact that he's a slugger, and keep in mind, he's in against one of the harder punching guys. He's in against a guy with a heavy KO ratio. Right, he's in against a puncher. But Yard's a young puncher who doesn't understand how to marry movement to his power. So here you have Kovalev, who's not exactly Pernell Whitaker, right? He's not the most elusive guy. But yet, Kovalev is able to literally go through rounds where, like the fifth round, Yard throws 22 jabs and according to CompuBox, lands none of them. In other words, Kovalev's getting in, pop, pop, right? That round, Kovalev lands 10 of his own jabs. So Kovalev comes in, bang, bang, bang. Then he backs away. And Anthony Yard is so robotic, Yard's still throwing jabs and missing all of them in that round. The jab's a difference maker here, folks. It's the jab with Kovalev's movement. It's the jab with Kovalev's awareness that he can concede the pocket to Anthony Yard and still land 10 jabs while Yard lands no jabs. Let's talk about the eighth round. Now, if Yard were a combination puncher, subset of boxing, if he's Andy Ruiz, right, heavyweight champ, who's a combination puncher, Right? If he's Andy Ruiz, understand he would have Kovalev's title because he badly hurts Kovalev. I mean, Kovalev is dazed. Right? Kovalev's there. He's there for the taking. You knew Kovalev was so badly hurt. You knew Kovalev's power was out the window. Right? Kovalev is too disoriented in that eighth round to hit you with power shots. Now let's make a distinction here, right? Let's make a distinction. A stoppage to me is when you either drop the other guy or you overwhelm the other guy to the point where the referee waves off the fight. So if I have a guy who's dead on his feet, who's been dazed, who's confused in front of me, and if I start throwing a bunch of punches and proving to the ref that this defenseless guy in front of me who's trying to hug me can't stop me from throwing punches and that this guy is badly hurt, then the ref can literally just wave off the fight. The other guy doesn't have to hit the canvas. You can get a stoppage without the other guy hitting the canvas. Right? You just have to hurt the other guy badly enough and then start throwing enough punches. So the fact that the other guy can't block your punches is too disoriented to block your punches and stuff. You just have to convince the ref that the other guy's overwhelmed. And the ref will pull the plug. So understand that Andy Ruiz, with a guy overwhelmed, when Andy Ruiz gets Joshua hurt every time, right, Andy steps up, he's throwing punches, right? He's not standing there and thinking about how he can knock out Anthony Joshua. That's not his thought process. It doesn't have to be perfect. Right? You have to be an opportunist. If your opponent is dazed, confused, staggering around the ring, trying to grab you, you have to keep your hands going. That's the best time to throw a combination. You want the referee to see you emptying the gun, throwing five, six, seven punches that are unanswered. You want the other guy to have to deal with getting through your combination and try to clinch you. Now, Anthony Yard 
has Kovalev about to go in that eighth round? Kovalev's done, folks. He is done. The problem was that Anthony Yard is too inexperienced at this point in his career. At that moment, fighting Kovalev in Kovalev's backyard, Yard should have pretended he was Andy Ruiz. Should have kept his hands going. Should have gone for the stoppage. Right? Should have just thrown a bunch of punches at Kovalev. The punches didn't even have to be that effective. Just throw a bunch of punches that Kovalev has to struggle to block that has Kovalev looking overwhelmed, right? Understand, Kovalev doesn't have the best survival skills. We all saw that second, Al that first Alvarez fight. We saw the second Andre Ward fight, right? Anthony Yard had to realize in that eighth round on the road in Kovalev's backyard that he wasn't there to win a decision. He also had to realize that that was the time to empty the gun. Instead, he makes a mistake. Instead of going for the stoppage, right, jumping in, flashing volume on Kovalev, right, forcing the ref to think, wow, can Kovalev even defend himself? Right? Instead of jumping in and moving his hand so Kovalev can't even clinch him. Think about how ineffective Anthony Joshua was in trying to clinch Andy Ruiz when he was hurt. Instead of going for the stoppage, Anthony Yard, as green as he is, goes for the knockout. See, he has Kovalev badly hurt in front of him. It's the eighth round of a fight he has to know he's losing on the scorecards. And Anthony Yard is too patient. Anthony Yard, a closer, high KO percentage, a heavy punch, is looking for the perfect opening to throw the perfect punch. He should have been flurrying. He should have been throwing a lot of punches. He doesn't do that. To the point where Kovalev is able to clinch him. Let me, let me make another point too. You're fighting Kovalev. Now you remember Andre Ward folding up Kovalev's body like a lawn chair. You remember Alvarez hitting Kovalev in the body and Kovalev having problems with the body shots. Now here you have a puncher like Anthony Yard fighting a guy who is weak in the body. As I've said in an earlier video, 175 is a tough division. Because you can't just say, okay, I'm going to move up in weight because cruiserweight is too high up from 175. It's 25 pounds away. Right, so here's Kovalev weak in the body Somebody in the comment section of this video tell me how Anthony Yard only lands 26 body shots. That's CompuBox's number. 26 body shots on Kovalev over 11 rounds. 11 rounds. Shouldn't he have been targeting Kovalev's body? Did he not watch the Andre Ward rematch? Did he not watch the Alvarez fight? How does Kovalev go from being completely spent at the end of the first Alvarez fight? Folks, he's done. He's completely spent. The ref lets that fight go on. Kovalev's hitting the canvas. Kovalev looks done. Right? By the way, Alvarez is moving his hands. He's not allowing Kovalev to survive by clinching him and holding him and stuff like that. Alvarez understood. Get in and out. 
right? How could you have the Alvarez fill? And then have Anthony Yard in the ring over 11 rounds, landing less than three body shots per round. Right? How does that happen, folks? When Kovalev's trying to grab Anthony Yard in that eighth round, understand, Kovalev is literally this close to losing his title. Right? Even if Kovalev succeeds in grabbing you around the shoulders, don't you just let your hands go to his body. Don't you? Here, Anthony Yard, I don't know what he's doing. Right? He lands 132 punches in the fight. He's going for Kovalev's head. Did, did someone not tell him that Kovalev had a jab? That finding the head of the guy who has a stick in your face and who's moving around the ring might not be the best idea. Maybe going to his body would be easier to hit. Maybe coming in low, getting under that jab and hunting the guy in the body should be the move. If I'm Anthony Yard today, I call up Andy Ruiz and I say, look, I need to talk to a combination puncher. Tell me what I did wrong in that eighth round, right? He's on third base, folks. He's about to bring home the title. Kovalev is as done as he could be. Kovalev is there. He's hit. You know, Kovalev has a poker face. Just look at his body. He's hit. He's hit. He's hanging out there. He's barely surviving. Let your hands go. Let me also say this too. Older fighters realize that when you have a guy badly hurt and he can hardly defend himself, right? That's the absolute best time to drain his tank. Right? Get those withering body shots in. Make sure that when the guy tries to recover between rounds, he's feeling those body shots. Right? Understand you still had a full third of the fight left. Ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth rounds. You had four rounds left of a twelve round fight. Now, Anthony Yard brings Kovalev to the edge of the cliff. In my opinion, he doesn't let his hands go. This, this reminds me of the Luis Ortiz Wilder round, right before the ref gives Wilder extra time, where Ortiz looks like he's run out of gas. Right? Ortiz is not high volume even though he has Wilder badly hurt. Right? I believe if Anthony Yard were a little bit more experienced, he would have been much more aggressive, at least in flashing his hands, to convince the referee, look, this guy's defenseless. Right? The fighters who get it, guys like Gervonta Davis, they hurt you. He's not going to then stand around and have the fight be evenly paced and look for the way to knock you out. No, no. Even sluggers like Gervonta Davis, they hurt you. They let their hands go. They understand, you know what, if I have this guy hurt, and if I then just start flashing hand speed here in combinations, and the ref is right here looking at the action, the ref might just stop in and wave off the fight. Yard had a golden opportunity in that eighth round. Did not take it. So let me tell you what happens after that eighth round. In the ninth round, he throws 11 jabs. Doesn't land any of them. Right? Crusher in the ninth round, throws 44 jabs, lands 15 of them. In other words, after the eighth round passes, Crusher gets back in the saddle. Tenth round, Yard throws 16 jabs, lands only one of them. Given Yard's lack of success in landing the jab, by the way, Crusher lands 17 jabs in the tenth round. Given Yard's lack of success in landing the jab, 
shouldn't he have gone to plan B by the ninth and 10th rounds? Isn't there a point in the fight where a guy has to say, well, you know what? My jab's just not working tonight. <laughs> you know, I'm having a problem hitting this guy with the jab. Let me also say, too, and I'm a big believer in this. Look at the golovkin Cal Brook fight. We know Cal Brook has the better legs than Golovkin. Right? Cal Brook can actually move in the ring. But Golovkin was the kind of guy who has a football player's mindset. There are times in that fight where Golovkin literally, you know, Kel Brooks across the ring, Golovkin runs over to him. Literally just runs at him. Look at the first Golovkin-Canelo fight. Canelo's trying to box. Canelo's moving away. Golovkin runs at him to get at him. Now you're Anthony Yard. The jab is not working. Kovalev is dictating distance. Right? Moves better than you. Has you resetting. In a polite fight where jabs matter, you're losing the rounds. Right? You're losing the rounds. At what point do you say, okay, plan A hasn't worked. Let me start running at the guy. Let me start trying to disrupt this pattern. Let me get out of my construct, since I'm a puncher, since this guy's weak in the body. Let me run over there, put my head down. Bob and Weave, channel Joe Fraser, channel Tyson, channel Marciano. Get in there, get low, and then start winging hard shots to the guy's body. Because this is your shot at the title. Right? It's time to get impolite. The polite fighting, whatever fight plan Yard had coming in, he's getting hit with the jab, right? Eight to 17 times with the jab, round after round. His jab's not landing. Whatever you've prepared for, there's a moment in the fight where you say, okay, now I've got to move on from that. What's worked against this guy in the past? Shouldn't Yard at a certain point, have started to imitate Andre Ward. Right? Shouldn't he have realized, okay, look, I need to start my own movement. What works against Kovalev? It's movement. Right? Look at the second Ward fight. Ward's moving. Look at the first Alvarez fight. Alvarez is moving. What fight has Yard seen where guys aren't moving much against Kovalev? Kovalev and actually beat Kovalev. Where's that fight footage? So what's Yard doing here? You're in Kovalev's backyard. You enter the ring. You're not the champion. You understand in a tie the champion keeps his belt. Yard should have also realized, hey, my jab's not as good as Kovalev's jab. We talked about the jab in the pre-fight video. So if you're the challenger and you know the chances of outboxing the champ in the champ's backyard aren't great, then the fight starts and you know what? Your jab's not landing. 0 for 22 in the fifth round. Your jab is not landing. 0 for 11 in the seventh round. 0 for 11 in the ninth round. At what point do you throw caution to the wind? and start to wail on the guy. Tell me what's going on in the ninth round. He has Kovalev badly hurt. Why the patience? Player, this isn't round two or round three. You're running out of time by the eighth round. Why the patience? How is Kovalev even able to clinch Anthony Yard? What I want you to do is look at that eighth round and just imagine if Anthony Yard were Gervonta Davis and he has Kovalev badly hurt. I'm telling you, Gervonta Davis, were he a light heavyweight, 
would have given the referee a decision to make. Would have thrown so many punches. So many punches. That the referee would have to say, wow, should I stop this fight? What's Anthony Yard doing? Now maybe, young guy, KO puncher, it's the eighth round, it's late for him. Maybe he's hoping for a second breath. Right? He does throw more punches. In fact, I believe it's the most punches he throws in the fight. 78 in that eighth round. Maybe he got tired toward the end of the eighth round, like Luis Ortiz did against Deontay Wilder. Right? But understand, the referee is never forced to make a decision. Right? The referee's not dealing with an Andy Ruiz situation where Ruiz hurts Joshua and then is following him and is throwing punches at him. Right? The referee doesn't have that dynamic here. If you're a challenger, you need to be aggressive. In the eighth round, against the champion, when you're fighting the champ in the champ's backyard, and you know his jab has been better all night than your jab. Right? Let me just say, too. I know before this fight, Anthony Yard looked faster handed than he did in this fight. Right? Anthony Yard looked like he was very accurate before this fight. Right? Just to be clear, he only lands 23% of his punches in this fight. But that's what happens when you fight a champ who moves. Right? You had two punchers in this fight. One guy had a back foot game could operate behind a jab. Right? The other guy couldn't cope with the fact that the pocket was moving. Right? One guy shifted up the game plan. Right? Kovalev's hitting him with jabs, is moving, then comes in with strategic right hands and stuff like that. Other times, Kovalev's trying to collapse the pocket a little bit, then backs away. Kovalev's playing games with distance. Whereas Anthony Yard's not making the adjustments. He's not adaptive, reactive in this fight. Right? How does he get to the 10th round and still is landing one of 16 jabs? How did he look so slow? This is what movement does. He looked so slow because for really the first time in his career, he's fighting a guy who is moving and making him pay. Who's hitting him repeatedly with a very stiff jab. Took the hand speed and timing right out of Anthony Yard's game. So Yard will be back. But he needs to look at this film. He needs to talk to combination punchers. Call up Sugar Ray Leonard. Right? He needs to say, what could I have done differently in this eighth round? Call up Andre Ward. Say, Andre, how did you get to Kovalev's body? Call up Alvarez. Say, player, you played him tw twice. You lost the second fight. What worked in the first fight that didn't work in the second fight? Yard also needs to figure out how to fight on the balls of his feet. Right? The problem with being a big, clunky slugger is that when another guy starts moving on you and you can't move with him, you're leaving a hell of a lot on the table, especially if you can't avoid his jab. That's how I see it. Congratulations to those who won on Kovalev. He delivered. But that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.